Hey guys, it's Jen and I'm excited today to share with you some of my thoughts about the brand new Tim Holtz um, stamp platform from Tonic Studios. It comes in a box inside of this little um, this little sleeve and I just wanted to show you how it comes packaged and it says on the outside it's open edged which um, means this side is open which is nice. I love that. It's 8x8 eight eight. Uh, at least the rulers go to eight inches on either side. Um, it also shows centimeters. I don't know if you can see that. But I'll show you. Um, it's kind of etched into the black and so I can see it quite easily but it might be hard to see on the video. Uh, it is open edged on the side which means that you can stick papers that are larger than 8 by 8 in there no problem. In fact because it's 8 by 8 means that you could stamp anywhere on a 12 by 12 sheet of paper which makes me super excited and happy because that means that I could stamp directly on a background of a layout. So I just wanted to show you if you see this here um, it goes well within the center of of my paper uh, if I were to slip this in here so that's super cool love that um, some things that I wanted to tell you about it before I show you some examples of how I plan to use it and I also have a layout that I've started that I, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use it as well um, there are a couple of cool things about this one this little platform piece comes off of of the of the platform the so the swinging arm comes off and it's magnetic so it will snap right back into place and the reason that it comes off well one of the reasons that it comes off um, you can see right here it says the word clear and if I pull it off and flip it over you can see right here it says the word rubber this stamp platform is designed so that um, whether you're using rubber cling stamps or clear stamps, you can you can use both because clear stamps are quite a bit thinner uh, in um, in height than a rubber cling stamp, and so it's nice to be able to have that option. I actually was looking for a rubber cling stamp, and I don't have any left in my stash. I've gotten rid of a bunch of them, um, but I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit. I, I put some adhesive on here because I was trying it with a stamp that I had carved which is out of, made out of rubber um, and that definitely worked so you can definitely try that as well but um, I don't have any undo so if you see that cloudiness that's just my bad from not <laughs> from putting sturdy adhesive on top of this but so if you're going to stamp with clear stamps you just need to be able to read the word clear right here so that's what I'll be using it for and um, it's nice that it comes off also because you can wash it if you needed to so uh, that works out nicely. It also comes with two sturdy magnets which is great and if you get these magnets close to each other they are hard to get apart um, if, you try, if you're trying to pry them apart but I found that if you kind of push them and slide them they will come apart so that's just something to note. Now I want to show you how I would use this. I'm sure by now stamp platforms are not um, a brand new concept. Uh, I'm sure that you've seen them kind of out on the market and around different places but I wanted to show you how I personally plan to use this. Um, one of the ways is I recently did this on a layout but I sometimes need an ink color that I don't quite have an exact match to. So let me show you an example of what I need. I have this patterned paper and it has kind of this coral colored pink uh, flower on it and I, if I'm trying to match a, a color in a patterned paper or an embellishment I want to get it right on so it looks like it belongs with it. That's the joy of stamping is you can make customized embellishments um, especially if they look, if they, if they really match the color then you can get it just right. So um, I was looking through my ink pads trying to find a color that matched this. I found this Hero Arts Shadow Ink and Fresh Peach and I thought that would be perfect. I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm going to use this Hampton Art just for this demonstration. Um, this Hampton Arts Clear Stamps that I got from scrapbook.com. Um, what I, The technique that I want to show you works really well with really solid stamps. So I am going to take 
this stamp, I put my stamp on top of this um, transparency and it pulled off some of the ink that's printed there that shows you what the stamp is. So that's just, it won't come like that if you get this <laughs> stamp. Okay, so I have my stamp here. I'm just gonna grab a piece of scratch paper for this to show you, okay? I'm going to put push my paper into the corner here and put down my magnets. And you can just place the, um, stamp wherever you want it onto your paper and you're just going to flip over the arm press it down and it's going to lift up the stamp and put it on the other side okay so here's what I want to do first of all these particular stamps are not um, they are not acrylic stamps they're not photopolymer acrylic they're just they're more rubbery so they don't stamp as cleanly so um, if you have stamps like that it's a great idea to do what I call double stamping which is to stamp it twice in the same spot which with with clear stamps it's simpler to do that but it's really nice if you can get it exactly right and that's how that's where a stamp press will come in handy okay so I'm just inking it up I'm gonna press it down you can see that it looks pretty good. It's not perfect. Um, these kinds of inks do, they're dye inks. The technique I'm showing you works best with dye inks because they can blend together. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. But um, you can see it looks pretty decent. But if I go back one more time and stamp it, I'm gonna get a nice dark impression. And when I look at, at that color compared to my paper here it's a little bit I don't know if you can really really tell but it's a little bit more pink um, than coral than this is and so I wasn't super happy with the exact color of this and so this is where I have done this several times where I'll mix stamp colors to get just the right color so I'm gonna clean off my stamp actually I probably didn't need to I'm gonna move it over here I would stamp just again right here but for the demonstration to show you the difference I'm gonna do it right here so I'm gonna just go ahead and pick that up again I'm going to stamp with this color again the fresh peach okay now that didn't stamp perfectly and you can see that there are some splotchy edges that doesn't matter because it's still in the same exact spot and I'm just gonna go back in and stamp it again make sure I'm pressing it in all the spots so it gets a nice clean image okay now what I'm gonna do I need it to just be slightly more more of a peachy shade than what it is so I have this ink called lemon chiffon from Simon Says Stamp and I am going to add some layers of yellow to this so I'm just gonna ink up my stamp again press that down Okay, and you can see it's a little bit more of a coral color. I'm gonna do it at least one more time. Okay, and there we have a much more peachy shade of that same stamp color and it really matches this a lot better than the brighter pink does. So it's a subtle difference, but when you are working with if you want to do some color matching, this is something, a trick that I've done several times um, to mix ink colors like that. So you could do the same thing. I wanted to show you just one more um, where you could make, it, if you only have a few ink colors, I think that this is a really great um, way to stretch your stamps. But what I'm going to do is pick this up one more time. Now, because I'm moving the paper, I'm moving over on the paper, I'm gonna move my magnets over just so it holds right in the spot where I need it to. And I'm going to, again, start with that same fresh peach color. Okay, I'm gonna stamp it down. I'm gonna do it one more time just to get a nice solid image. Okay, now I'm going to make this a much more orange color. I don't have a lot of orange ink pads um, and it's hard to get a good orange. So I do have this Adirondack Butterscotch and it is like a mustard color from Ranger. And so I'm going to ink up my stamp with that kind of bright mustard yellow color and stamp that down. You can see that's kind of a deep 
orange color. I'm going to do it one more time. And you can keep layering on the ink until you get the color that you like. Okay, so you can see now I have a nice deep orange color. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this. You can try this with all sorts of um, different inks. And I wanted to show you one more thing that because I'm going to um, be using this technique on the layout that I am going to show you in just a second here. These particular stamps also come with little outlines. So this is the outline for the image that I have been creating. You can see it's got some nice little lines. This is something that's really great to do if you are only using um, one ink color. I'm going to show you on top of this one, but you can stamp the same ink color several times to get um, a darker tone of that color. And it's a really subtle look, but it's something that I really like. So let me show you what I mean. So I am going to just line this stamp up on top of my image here. And it's not perfect, that's okay. But I'm just, you know, doing it where I think it looks good. I'm gonna pick that up. I'm actually gonna move my magnet over here. Okay, so I only stamped this color with my Hero Arts Fresh Peach Mid-Tone Shadow Ink. I am going to stamp the outline in the same color. Outline stamps, it's really hard to line up a second time. So you can see that I've got this simple outline shape, um, but I want it to be much darker. So I'm just going to ink up my stamp again and press it down. And I'm going to do it one more time. Now this would be super hard to line up if you were just stamping it on your own, but because I have this stamp platform it's so much easier and now you can see I have a nice a darker outline now because these are dye inks they are going to soak into the paper dye the paper and um, that means this will dry a little bit lighter but I wanted to show you how that looks and I did use it on this I use that technique on this layout here you can see I've done three different flowers and I've also done some leaves using the same technique and it's a pretty subtle a tone on tone effect but I think it looks really nice and I did it with the green and with the um, pink here so this pink is a mixture of the pink and yellow and then I did the same thing to stamp the outline on top of it and I think it turned out really nice now the green I did a mixture of um, a green this beanstalk ink and then I did that same lemon chiffon color over the top of it just to lighten it up a little bit and brighten it. So I think it's really fun to mix colors. It ended up matching some of the colors in my layout really well. Um, and so I, I really love that. Now, let me show you another thing that I think is really cool for this stamp press. One more technique. And I'm going to show it to you on my layout. And it has to do with some letters. So let me take this off here. I don't need that stamp anymore. And I'm going to, so let me just really quickly show you this layout. This is a layout about my sister and her son. We were at um, a little farm uh, near our house and where you can like pet the animals and stuff. And they were petting this goat and then the goat licked her hand and you can just see her face changing like Ew, like it's so gross, uh, which I think is hilarious. And so I am going to, if you're a Jimmy Fallon fan, you'll get this, but my title's going to be, These Goats Are Ill. <laughs> and so I want the word ew to be right here. And I want to stamp that on there, which is fine, no big deal. Easy enough to stamp because there's a straight line here. Um, and I'm going to use these large Studio Calico stamps. Okay, so what I want to do is um, make my title be like go from one color to another. So I want to do an ombre colored title. Now, I'm going to take off all of the embellishments that might get too thick or in the way, but I have mostly put this layout together because I wanted to show you that because of the way that this stamp press, um, the stamp platform is created, that you can stamp on um, layouts that are, you know, nearly complete. Okay, I haven't glued everything down exactly right. Okay, so, I am going to flip this around and this is going to be the background for my layout. I'll put that on later. I just need the white part for now. I'm just going to slide it right in here 
and I don't need these. These are going to be my letter stickers that are going to go above the words. And what I want to do is have my title go from light, this, I want it to go from pink. So these letters right here are pink. So I want to start at the tops of my letters to be pink and then have them fade out to be yellow. But um, I don't, there, there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can put your stamp on a block and use your lighter color first and put the lighter color on and then put the darker color on top and then stamp that down. Um, I, if you don't want to mix your colors of ink, if you don't want them to get contaminated, I'm going to show you a different way to do this that's going to be easy to double stamp um, so that you get a nice clear, clean image uh, using this stamp press here. So I am going to line up my letters where I want them on the layout. So it just says ew with an exclamation mark. Because it's going to say goats are ew. And if you wanted to, I tried this too. This has a grid on the background. So you could line up your letters um, using like one of the grid lines. But because I have a straight line here on my layout, I can just use that. So I'm going to get this nice and secure. And I'm going to move these just over a little bit. It doesn't matter to me if it's exactly perfect. But if it matters to you, you can kind of fiddle around with it a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to press this down so I can pick up those letters. Okay, and this is nice and sturdy in here. And I am going to first take my yellow ink. And I'm going to do this a few times because it's a very light color and I'm going to do the bottoms of my letters because I want the tops of them to be pink. So I'm just going to press my ink pad on the bottoms of these letters about halfway up and I'm going to stamp that down. Now I should have checked to make sure my stamps were clean, which I didn't, but I'm sure it'll be okay. Okay, so you can kind of see it there, it's really soft. I'm going to do a little bit more and I'm going to go up a little bit more with my ink. And it's going to be in the same spot so it will be easy to stamp it right in the same place again. Okay, so that looks nice. There's looks like there's a little bit of contamination of color on my E because I'm bad at cleaning my stamps. But if you're good at cleaning your stamps, it probably won't be a problem. I am actually going to stamp it just one more time because I want that yellow to be visible. This is a really light color of yellow, but it matches my layout, so I'm going to go ahead with that. Okay, that looks good to me. So now I'm ready to go on to my other color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off my stamp. And I got a little bit of ink on the stamp press too, or the stamp platform too, so I'm just going to clean that off. And now I'm going to go in with my fresh peach color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the ink to the stamp and I'm going to make it so that it will go a little bit into where this yellow is. So I'm going to go about halfway down the stamp. Maybe not quite. You can take your finger and rub off some of it if you don't want as much. It's, it's better to start with less because you can always go back in and stamp it again because we've got the platform here where it makes it easy. Okay, so there you can see that they are nice and lined up. I'm going to stamp this one more time and then I'm actually going to go back with my yellow to blend it more. So I'll show you that. Okay, so that's nice and inked up. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that. And now I will go back in with my yellow. Let me just clean this off. And these are sticking nicely to this right here. Okay, so back to the lemon chiffon. And I'm going to go a little bit more up the stamp so I can blend the color together. And I'm going to get kind of an orange tone in the middle, which is good because this is kind of orangey right here where you can see these blend together. Did I do it on the bottom? I think I did. 
Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time because I can do it as many times as I want and it will still look good because it's going in the exact same spot. Okay, so I am going to be done with that now. So I can take this off of here and I let my <laughs> magnets close together. But um, So that's kind of how I plan to use my stamp press. Now I did want to mention that on the bottom of this, oops, it's kind of like this rubbery um, texture, which means that it won't slip and slide around the surface of your desk as you're stamping with it. So I just wanted to mention that as well. So that is the new um, Tim Holtz and Tonic Stamp Platform. I hope that I have given you some ideas on ways that you can use this. Don't forget that you can also use it with your rubber cling stamps simply by flipping this little platform around. Um, and I just wanted to really quickly show you the front again, what it says the features are. Open edged, which I already mentioned, full magnetic eight and a half by eight and a half inch base with two handy magnets, anti-slip base, which I just showed you. So all of those things, um, I really actually like this. I have been thinking about getting a stamp, um, some sort of stamp platform for a while. And um, I, I got offered to try this one out uh, a little bit earlier than than it available for everybody else which um, I'm super happy that I got to try it out because I really actually like it and I think I will definitely use it to, um, especially for when I want to uh, do some stamping with uh, mixing colors which I do often and then I really like the way that the ombre turned out and I think for lining up stamped titles I think it will be really nice to uh, do that on here as well to be able to double stamp it also because you know if you're stamping directly on your background, you want to get it right the first time. You don't want to have to re-stamp it um, and then get off a little bit because then it ruins your whole layout, right? But I I felt good about this layout's mostly done about um, putting stamping directly on the background. So just some things to keep in mind. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And I will link to some different stamps uh, that I think would work well for these kinds of techniques in the video description below. And let me know if you have any questions. You can head over to my blog at craftygenscow.com uh, to see more photos of the layout and to check out more information. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.